In this video, I'd like to give an introduction to SharePoint Workspace 2010. SharePoint Workspace has two aspects to it. In one aspect, SharePoint Workspace is really the product formerly known as Groove. I can create a workspace to share documents and collaborate with other users who also have a SharePoint Workspace client. In this way, I can work with people inside and outside of my organisation. Doing this is very simple. I go to the New button and choose to create a Groove workspace. I give it a name and now my workspace is provisioned. In this workspace, I have a space for document. There's a discussion section, similar to discussion forums in SharePoint, and a shared calendar. In each of these areas, I can add new items. I can add a new meeting with standard information such as subject and location. There's also a panel for adding free text, so as well as the basic information, I can add more detail. At the top of the calendar event, I can choose to show different elements, such as the agenda. In the agenda, I can add topics, assign presenters, and create a time. Once I've created agenda items, I can move them around as required to give a clear order. Similarly, I can go to the discussion section and create a new topic. Once somebody has added a topic, I can also reply to theirs, so you can have ongoing communication. In the documents section, I have the ability to either create new documents or to upload them. I can put a selection of files into this workspace and organise them into folders. The value of what I've talked about so far only really comes out when you consider that this is a collaborative tool. The bottom section of the left hand side is a list of the members of the workspace. So far there's only me, which is not particularly useful so I can invite somebody else in. I can choose from a list of existing contacts or click on this more link. I could search for a user in my company directory or just type in an email address. If I want to, I can invite somebody to also manage this workspace, or to contribute, or to be able to see what's going on, and assign a personal message. This sends out an invitation to invite these people into my workspace. They can then interact with my content and add their own, so we can collaborate remotely. There's even a chat function for real-time collaboration. The three types of content here are the default ones, documents, discussions and calendars. I can get rid of these if I chose to by clicking on delete or I can add new ones. If I go to the Workspace tab, I can add new content in the form of lists, notepads, or even a chess game. This workspace is flexible enough that its content can be adapted to suit the needs of the users. So far, I've talked about a collaborative workspace, but I haven't talked about the SharePoint aspect of this product. If I go back to the launch bar and click on New again, I can choose to create a SharePoint workspace. 
Here, instead of being asked for details of a space I'm creating, I'm being asked to provide the address of a SharePoint site. This is because SharePoint Workspace 2010 provides an offline copy of SharePoint 2010 content. I enter the URL of a SharePoint site that I have access to and SharePoint Workspace starts synchronising that site with my computer. Depending on the size of the site, this might take a while. Once it's done, I can choose to open the workspace. Here I see a list of the lists and libraries inside the site. Within the workspace, I can interact with my document libraries and lists, adding new documents based on content types in that library. But why would I want to use SharePoint Workspace rather than going directly to SharePoint? Because SharePoint Workspace is an offline client. I can synchronise a SharePoint list, library or site to SharePoint Workspace. I can then take my computer offline and continue working on my SharePoint content. I can edit and add content as I could when I was online, knowing that it will synchronise up later. Even if you customise the list entry form in InfoPath, you get the same entry experience as if you were online. An interesting thing to note is that SharePoint Workspace will work with the Business Connectivity Services. It's possible to use the BCS to create a list in SharePoint that contains external data. That data could be coming from a range of places, such as a SQL database or the company's CRM system. You can pull this data offline into SharePoint Workspace in exactly the same way as an ordinary list. I've shown how to connect to SharePoint from the SharePoint Workspace client, but you can do it the other way. If I go to a SharePoint library and choose the Library tab, there's a button to sync to SharePoint Workspace. This creates a workspace for me in the client, as before, but it means I can create my offline copy from whichever tool I'm in. I should point out that in this type of workspace, I don't have the same option to invite others to join my workspace, as I did with the Groove workspace type. That's for a very good reason. Security. When SharePoint Workspace is used as an offline client to SharePoint, those with permissions to access a list or library can create a workspace for it, but those who do not have permission can't. This means that the security settings of your SharePoint server are maintained. Up till now, I've talked about the things that SharePoint Workspace will do, which is quite a lot. But it's worth pointing out that not everything in SharePoint can be synced to SharePoint Workspace. One item which can't be synchronised is the calendar. This was a deliberate choice. We still recommend Outlook to be used as the offline client for calendars. Other list types that aren't supported are form libraries, surveys and the business intelligence lists. As long as you bear those limits in mind, SharePoint Workspace can be a fantastic tool for collaborating externally to SharePoint and for bringing your key SharePoint documents and lists offline.